Hey, that ain't Mike do it better. I ain't tripping off all that shit. What's going on? What's going on, man? It's your boy Richard Fay TV, man. We back in the building. We always working. We always grinding. I got a special guest for y'all. My boy Ty. Pop your shit, y'all. Hey, it's your boy Ty. T Y you dig. Trust yourself. You know what I'm saying? Trust yourself, trust yourself. So what made you come up with that name? Trust yourself, man. Because like you gotta always believe in what you do. Like people not gonna support you sometimes, and some people might do, but you just gotta believe in what you're gonna do and just put it into action, and then it's gonna go how you think it's gonna go. That's what's up, man. So how long have you been doing music? To be honest, I've been doing music since about middle school. I wrote a song like seventh grade. It was called Crump to the Limit. It was back when Travis Porter used to be out. But we never gonna hear it though. But I, I actually did one in college my first year. It was actually going crazy in the dorms though, but I just never put it out. Cool, cool, cool. So you was doing music in college? Yeah, I wrote a song called Pour It Up. Okay, that's dope, man. So how how is it being an artist in school, like in college? Like everybody on campus know you're doing music, then you was playing football as well. So how was you balancing the two? Well, see, I was always, always kind of being like pretty popular. I was always a new kid at school, so I was kind of used to always having attention. So I went to like five, six high schools. So I'm used to having like all the attention. So it wasn't really nothing. And then like, I'm a silly dude. So I just be doing stuff anyway. Like they take it serious, but then it's just like, oh, that's time. You know what I'm saying? Cool. So what made you put down the football and pick up the mic? <sighs> well, when you put on the football, I, I had to come from California to Georgia Southern for the reasons and whatnot. And then it just like, I just started seeing the wave. I was like, you know, maybe football ain't going to be the thing to take me out. But I've always been doing music, but I've been doing it in front of, like, my friends and stuff, low-key, behind the scenes, like, rapping and stuff. But I just never put it out. Like, I'm, like, an extrovert, but I'm also shy at the same time. Okay, but I'm that. not shy. Crazy. I understand that. Um, we got an artist like that. I, I, I'm not comparing you to her, but Summer Walker is like that. Like, she's an introvert, but she also know how to be an artist and her fans get to know her. But then she know how to, like, close herself in as a person. So, a lot of people like that type of shit. I seen her on Instagram. She was like, uh, if you play my song in the club, I'm going to leave. I'm the same way. I don't even like people to play my music around me. Yeah. Because I, I don't know. I be getting nervous or something. I don't know. It's like still new to like, dang, they playing my song. It's crazy. Yeah. So was you like that when you was playing football? Oh, no. Nah. When the lights come on, I'm shining. I'm shining to do my thing. But I don't talk though. I don't talk during the game at all. Because like, I don't believe in all that rah-rah stuff. You talking all that stuff. Listen, man. We going to line up on the field. going to do this. Do I'm not going to talk. Get my work in. Touchdown. End of story. That's dope, that's dope. So you already got the winning attitude. Yeah, comparative. I've always been a champion, you know what I'm saying? And I always just see invitations. That's just something I just do. So how would you describe yourself as an athlete and as an artist? See, yeah, as an artist, I kind of look at it the same way. Say as an athlete, so you grinding in the field, like you going like two a days, practice, and being an artist the same way. You write music on your own before people even know it. It's like what you do behind the scenes. Like you write music, you might be listening to beats like on a regular. I just play beats. I don't even listen to music. I just play beats. And whichever one just catch my ear, I'm like, oh, I like that. So I save it to my playlist. Like you type my name in, like my real name in on Google. Mm -hmm. It was like five playlists with like a hundred beats on them. Mm -hmm. So I just scroll through all of them and I just find the ones that hit home. Then I just start rapping to them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like you got to put in that extra work behind the scenes. Like, and just so, so when it's game time, you're going to flourish. I feel that. Pre practice. I feel that. I feel that. So. Before the interview, we was talking about you, like, basically pre-practicing, strategizing about how you wanted to become an artist. Who were some people that you was looking up to while you was doing that? My boy Dolph, my boy Scooter, for real. Because, like, I'm and Rollo and the baby. They was, like, always saying, run your money up first. Like, get your money up first. Plan. I was reading, uh, a doc I was watching a documentary on Dolph. He was, like, he sat in the crib for, like, three months and stuff, just stacking up on videos, making music, everything. But he ran his bag up first. So when it's time to came in the game, what he say? He came in the game flexing. So try to come in the game flexing. I already got my bag, so I don't need it from nobody else. You know what I mean? So you can move how you want to at your own pace. You can dictate your own career. That's what's up. So you just graduated college, right? Yes, sir, man. Class of 20, 2020. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah. I'm class of 2022. Hey, business management, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Georgia Southern shot at GSU, yeah. the real GSU, yeah. not that. I ain't gonna diss them, but you know who we not. Yeah, yeah, I pop all that shit, pop all that shit, man. So, okay, so would you graduate in college, man? Do you think people are gonna take you serious as an artist all the way? Of course. Cause it's like, like I say, you can come from the same environment as like your worst people, your savages, your killers, or all that woo woo. Come from the same place. I went and played football, I did what I wanted to, and graduated. First generation graduation. So you can do anything you want to. You can't tell nobody, you can't nobody tell you you can't. And just because you in that type of environment, you don't gotta be a statistic. I tell myself I would never be a statistic. You know, so I just made that a promise to myself. I'm going to be that. I was always going to be either, either NFL star, uh, actor, or a music star. And I might just 
one of them, I got a little X bomb, but the other two, I still can do it. I really can still go to the NFL. You know, yeah, don't, don't give up on that football shit, man. That's just a lot of money in that. Especially if you're still young and you still can move and play. Oh, yeah. I'm still there, man. I was fast. I'm a track star, too, man. Yeah. I won't give up on that. So, you dropped your first song, True Story. You did 23K views off the back, man. How did that make you feel? It, it just, in, just in two weeks. Man, I don't even know. I can't even say nothing. It's like, just, it made me like, dang, that's crazy. 20K, these, these 20, 20K people watch my... Like, that's crazy. But then it's like, I'm in shock. But then at the same time, it's like... I know it's supposed to do that because I put the time in and I know that song good. It's like a universal song. It's a come up song. Everybody got a come up story. Like everybody had a rap to reach a story. Everybody got something they can tell. So I know it can relate to the masses. That's what's up, man. So before you got into music, you already had a fan base in the sports world, right? Do you think that just translated over once you started doing music? They just jumped on it because they wanted to keep following you? Yeah, because like, I mean, I was always popular on sports and stuff, but I always used to be in acting classes too. I used to be in like the plays and stuff. And I tell you, I always was like a new guy at school, so I always kind of had always the attention on me. I used to get like the superlative awards and whatnot, so I kind of always had attention. So I'm always, I'm used to it, and like I expect it. Like if I walk in the room, I know someone gonna look. Like not to be like can I get something? Just like it's the way you carry yourself. Yeah. You gotta demand it. You gotta seduce the world to giving it what you want. Yeah. So on the business side of music, who do you have helping you with that? Really, this is like me and my sister. To be honest. Like, I talk to her about everything, and then, like, I always, like, I tell you, I sit and do it, like, years before. Like, it seems like I'm doing it right now, but I've been plotting on this, like, two years. But it's, like, since, like, the Kobe incident, it just made me feel like, man, you don't know when you're not going to be here, so you got to just go ahead and do it. So all my plans, I just put it in effect and execute it. Just like football practice, just like, I just execute it. It was always tough. So, like, yeah, just put it in the work. That's what's up. What is the biggest thing the youth can learn from you? That people can learn from me? The youth. I'm talking about the youth. Oh, the youth can learn. Hey, man, stay optimistic. You can do it. If you want to, like, don't let nobody tell you that you can't do anything. This is a living, breathing example of, like I say, you can come from anywhere and not be a statistic. Don't, don't nobody tell you what you're going to do. Like, a teacher in school told me it's not realistic to come out come out of school and make 70000 It's not realistic because you're telling me that. 70, you know what I mean? 70000 a year. I think she said <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, nah, nah, see, I can make it to the 7K, make that, you know, yeah, they kind of got like that, but, but you know, I'll tell like, 70,000 a year not realistic, it's because you told us it wasn't realistic, if I set my mind for a million, I might, I'm might, i at least put my head on 100,000, yeah. you know what I mean, it's like you're trying to minimize our goals and stuff, and I can't do that, yeah. we gotta be above average, always been, yeah. so with, with everything that's going on right now, with the police brutality, what kind of music do you think you can put out to like make a difference right now? It's like with all that going on, it's like you gotta have something like in between to like mellow out, mellow out the energy that's going on right now. Cause like it's a bunch of emotions are high right now. Like people burning stuff, people chanting, folks dying. But at the same time, I feel like, say from other folks looking in, what do you expect? You keep seeing all these people dying, y'all doing this all police brutality. What you expect these people gonna do? You're not gonna like, you're not gonna keep tolerating the same thing over and over. It's like being the same, like doing the same thing, and expecting the same results. Okay, all these protests. Yeah, peaceful too, but sometimes you gotta get somebody to look at you. You gotta do you gotta do a little something out of the ordinary to catch their attention, let you know I'm not playing, I'm serious. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. To get them to take you serious. But like, but I can just say you just gotta mellow out, just, just know like in the end, it'll be okay. I always believe in trust the process. And you put out good energy, good energy will come back. I'm a strong believer in karma. You put out that good vibe, good vibes gonna come back, and it's good vibes gonna be around you too. You gotta separate yourself from the negative part and then just know, just trust that it's gonna be okay. That's dope, that's dope. You were saying something before the interview. It, um, it was like a joke. It was like, people had a mindset, if you think you're living a hard life, you're going to continue to live a hard life because you think you're living a hard life. Once you think that you're living a good life, things get better. So when did you when did you develop that mindset? See, kind of, uh, really, I was in like uh, the ninth grade. It was like, I don't ever forget. Like, me and my other sister, we was walking home, and that's like, okay, we done put out the houses a couple times. Like three, four times. We been bouncing around like my aunties and stuff. But that's like the first time I've actually walked up to the door. Cause you know, your mama hides stuff from me. I walked up to the door and actually seen the yellow square note eviction notice. Your shit locked, key don't work. And we walking home off the bus. It's like, damn, Taj, that look like your stuff. I don't never like mine. Yeah. So we're like, I don't know, that can't be us. So we walked up to the stairs and like, damn, that's us. And they say, you know, like, we just sitting outside. I ain't having no phone. And as a freshman, I didn't have no phone. So we had to wait till our mom come in uh, U-Haul. 
So then she came up, we put the stuff in there, and what it is, and the time Auntie Yas, hey, 13 deep in that. Then I seen you know, next phase, next phase, take out this, then I'm gonna photo my dad. But like I say, it's only hard if you think it is. Like, I look at it like, hey, it is what it is. Time that you gotta keep elevating, you gotta level up, you gotta boss up, you can't let this make or break you. Cause if you let that make or break you, you gonna you might end up being statistic. You start being down about yourself, you wanna go do some crazy stuff. You know what I mean? Then you just get out of your element. But if you just stay focused, keep that strong mentality, you'll get through it. Like, like I say, trust the process, just know. Cause I always knew in my head, man, either this, this football gonna take, I'm gonna be some type of star. So I'm just sticking football practice. I used to walk the football practice every day for like seven miles, walk there and back. So I just know I stick to it and I know it's gonna pay off. Something was gonna pay off. Yeah. And that brought me other, other like outlets. I got on a magazine a couple of times and I met other folks that helped me out in different ways. That's dope, man. Give me three of your short term goals. Three of my short term goals. I want to make, I want to make a million by next year. Nah, I want that. I want to make a million by December. Yeah. Um, everybody coding, yeah. <laughs> second goal, I just want to help people. To be honest, I really don't. I want to have enough money. Nah, I don't know, man. I don't really have. As a matter of fact, I want this charge it. And I'm this challenge I've been looking at. That's the goal I want. I'm, I might try to get it by the end of this week. Yeah. And my third goal. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really have goals. I just be living day to day. Like, I just, I wake up, forget my sins, hold it, they be blessed, let's rock out. I feel that. I feel that. So, what do you, where where do you see yourself at in the next 12 months with your music career? The next 12 months in my music career, I should be, there's no reason why I shouldn't be like a star. There's no reason I shouldn't be big as like, I ain't gonna say the biggest stars, but ain't no reason my name shouldn't be popping. Cause I'm putting the work behind the scenes and I'm putting the work. You know what I'm saying? In front of other people, other folks. And I got good energy, got good vibes. I'm a genuine person. People mess with me. So I'm a cool, dude. I don't got nobody that don't like me. You know what I mean? So ain't no reason why I should not excel. I'll tell you I like exceeding expectations. I just can't be average. I don't do above. What do you plan on doing on the entrepreneur side? Like, how do you plan on investing your money? Well, I'm going I'm to reinvest in myself to help my music career. But, like, as far as, like, other things, I'm thinking about starting, like, a, a hair business, you know? Hair from a king or follow the page. Cause like no other males sell hair. And like, you know, girls, girls, they, they rock with other girls, but like they kind of envy on each other at the same time. And it's like, I don't know, Kai said, but who who better to get a girl to do something than a guy? You know what I mean? And it's, it's something different too. Like they're gonna be like, oh snap, he's selling hair. Oh, he cool too, and it's good hair. You know, I gotta have the best quality, all that. And then I'm thinking about uh, making a brand off like the name, HK High Class, Humble Kings. Starting like uh, foot scrubs. The jackets, uh, slides, book bags, and whatnot, getting that rolling. So, you know, big stuff coming soon. All right, man. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Do you plan on having an online store? Yes, sir. You know, I'm working on that right now. My sister's actually doing it. Uh, she, her boyfriend is actually good with computers, and he's setting it up as we speak, to be honest. That's what's up. Hey, free game. You go to Wix.com, create your website, pay for everything, then you can create your own online store and save a little money. I know how to do it, so you want me to do it, you can hit me up too. I can put you down. Yeah, but yeah, yeah come come get that done. <laughs> but right. man, like I said, man, I really um I appreciate you, man, you know, coming through doing the interview with us, man. You know, linking in, appreciate Can it, Casino Smooth for tying things up, man. Thank thank them guys over there. Go do marketing with him. Um is there anything you wanna say before you slide, bro? Hey man, follow me on all my social media, YouTube, Twitter, IG, at King Name Ty, K I N G N A M E D T Y. You dig? And make sure you remember to trust yourself, all that. Trust yourself, trust yourself. And it's your boy, Rich and Fake TV. We out.